Hi guys, welcome back. Today's video is very exciting. We are going to be looking at 14 different examples of visual merchandising. So get ready, get cozy, sit down, get your favorite beverage, let's chill, and let's talk about 14 examples of visual merchandising. As always, if you enjoy these videos, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more, and let's get right into the video. So 14 examples of visual merchandising. Where to even start? Are there really fortunate examples? Absolutely, yes. Let's start out with the first one, display windows. Display windows are like the storefront displays where you see things that are um, displayed in the window. They include graphics, they include the spirit of the brand, the image of the brand of the store. And I like to kind of take it back and compare it to back in the day when you had the old department stores, maybe like in New York and like Macy's, when it was Christmas time and they would go all out for the window displays. That's always what I think of when I think of storefront displays. It's just the image that I go to. Um, so that's what I correlate with the best. It's like the best reference for me. You guys might have other ones. Um, but a lot of the times there will be stores that don't really go above and beyond and they're a storefront. So you're just kind of like, okay, who cares? But in those circumstances, it can be a really big um, opportunity for merchandisers, kind of like art in a way. And um, I think those are really cool. They're some of my favorites too. It's like a statement piece. You're saying a lot with saying a little. You're saying a lot without sh with showing a little, if that makes sense. The second one is store layout. We've talked about this one before, but store layout is very important when it comes to merchandising. You wanna make sure that all of your product is easily found for your customers. You don't wanna have them having a difficult time navigating around trying to find a product because even if they do end up asking for your help or if they don't they'll probably just be so annoyed with the process that it's that difficult to find anything they'll just leave and then you'll lose sales so store layout is huge you want to make it nice and open and clean and easy to access and walk around and um it's a really big one too a lot of people don't think you always want things to look pretty but they have to look pretty in the right space next one on the list is interior displays we talked about this one in my previous video as well this is the inside of your store, but not necessarily specific displays. It is very uh, close with store layout. It is how the clothing and fixtures are laid out, such as mannequins, how the clothes are hung, how the tables are. If you have tables of folded sweaters or jeans or little um, displays of like jewelry, things like that. Um, also very important, you need to make sure it looks clean and organized and ready to shop. You never want your store to be messy. That's why in one of my videos when I talk about the responsibilities of being a merchandiser, like the duties, you definitely want to do visual rounds. Make sure that the store is shoppable, cleaned up throughout the day, every day too. And um, because nobody wants to go into a dressing room and there's like a huge stack of clothes still in there or the necklaces are tangled up. Little details like that are huge turnoffs for customers. So you gotta watch out for those because those are really big. Next on the list is mannequins. So mannequins are, they can be quite challenging to merchandise and dress. It kind of depends on the mannequin. When I worked at Tommy Hilfiger, we had the ones that had um, the little metal bar that goes into the back of the calf and you have to set the mannequin you, once you put jeans on the mannequin, you have to set like the mannequin back on the stand just right. And it's a very difficult angle and sometimes it can shatter the leg and mannequins are really expensive. So it's a very nerve wracking process. Um, but mannequins are huge because you're showing customers how the clothes are styled, how they fit, how they can be styled. You can accessorize the mannequins and show them the possibilities of what their clothes could look like. But it is a, a key element uh, definitely for merchandising to show how the clothes are displayed, how they can be worn, how they fit, things like that. So mannequins are definitely huge. Point of purchase displays, I can guarantee you, you have seen this literally everywhere, whether it be at Trader Joe's or you see magazines, you see candy, you see gums, you see sodas, last minute little things that you might wanna add on. Big example of this would be like Sephora or Ulta. Oh my God, are they good at this? When you're waiting in line and the line takes forever because they're so slow. You're waiting in line, you don't know what to do. Here, let us tempt you with hundreds and hundreds of cheap makeup, affordable, like like low price makeup that you can buy, that you can use. You need a mask, do you need nail polish? Do you need lip balm? Do you need this hair accessory? Oh my gosh, they are so good at it. If you're waiting in line, if it's Christmas and the holidays are coming up and it's just crazy busy everywhere and you're tired of waiting, you start to look around at things. You start to pick things here and there and add them to your shopping. Point of purchase displays are huge. They are huge and they are used everywhere because they do help with sales. Next on the list is lighting design. You want your space to be lit well, almost like when you're doing a YouTube video or trying to take that perfect selfie, you're looking for the right lighting. You want something that's complimentary and isn't harsh, like maybe 
harsh hospital lighting like fluorescent lighting and it's not very like comforting or appealing or warm, you always wanna search for good lighting that's going to complement your entire space of your store, every display and product and focus on what you want it to focus on and not being like, wow, that's really bright, things like that. Lighting is huge. Next would be music. Music brings people together. Music is universal. Everybody loves music. I think of, when I think of music, I think of places like Starbucks, okay? This is just my personal experience with like happy places. Starbucks around Christmas time. You're sitting in a little nook in the corner, writing away, reading, working on your laptop. You have a nice peppermint mocha to your side. It might be snowing, it might be raining outside, and they're playing wonderful jazz, wonderful holiday music, whether it's Michael Buble or Frank Sinatra, Ella Fitzgerald. That, I have chills. <laughs> I just set up like my ideal day. Um, that puts me in a happy place because it's relaxing. You know what I mean? Um, music, just like, you know, the five senses, like hear, sight, smell, sense. Uh, music is just so universal, like I said, and I feel like that definitely affects shoppers greatly if you play soothing music or maybe like throwbacks and people are like, oh my God, I haven't heard this song in forever. It affects people's moods. If it affects their mood, it's gonna affect how they shop. Next on the list is scent, and I have to do it, guys. We gotta talk about Abercrombie and Hollister because this is like, this was like their go-to. Everybody knew, everybody still knows what Abercrombie cologne smells like because that is like their trademark. They use it everywhere. They spray it everywhere. Insider tip, little thing, I'm gonna tell you. Um, Kalani actually used to work at Abercrombie & Fitch. She was a manager there for a while. And um, there was a rumor, I asked him this like literally just the other day actually, about if they actually did mop the floors with cologne, which was a rumor I heard because they wanted it to be so widespread and well known. And he said they didn't, but they would spray it throughout the store on the little sprayers. Um, so people would constantly have that scent while they were shopping and experience. Although the lighting was dim there, you know, like that meme where that dad's wearing his little headlight uh, flashlight because he can't see anything because it's so freaking dark. It's like you're shopping in a very uh, intoxicating cave. They did not do that, but they had it on the sprayers throughout the store so that you would constantly smell it. You know, just kind of like Disneyland, how Disneyland uh, sprays out scents and makes you think like, oh, maybe I'm hungry, maybe I need to go do this. Disneyland, they sneak you too, don't get me wrong. But scent is huge. Scent is gonna remind you of things like when you're walking in the mall and you pass Cinnabon or you smell that there's a Cinnabon nearby and you smell that sticky cinnamon bun goodness and you're like, oh my God, I need one. Scent, scent triggers good and bad. So you wanna have a pleasant smell um, in your store if possible. Just keep it clean, keep it fresh, maybe spritz some perfume, but be careful because people do have allergies. Uh, but scent is a big one for sure. Next on the list is graphics. Just like your store most likely will be sent graphics for upcoming promotionals or just to reflect the season or whatever it might be. Um, I know at Tommy Hilfiger, we always had new graphics in the windows when we were advertising big sales, if it were like a summer, if it were like a Black Friday doorbuster, or if it was just like we were getting a new fit polo and it was all the rage, little things like that. Graphics are really big because they do the advertising for you for the most part. You can literally just have a banner in the window advertising like a happy family of wearing all sorts of clothing from your brand and then you'll have mannequins merchandise next to it so it's doing the same for you and then when people come in they might ask about it or you might have to inform them again be like hey all of our jeans right now are 40% off or whatever it may be graphics next on the list you guys you know how much I talk about this it's one of my favorite seasonal displays because I just love seasons especially fall and winter look at me right now <laughs> I love embracing the fall and winter and Christmas and cold days and those are my favorite so I feel like those are the best displays that I do because it's easier for me to pass along that excitement through my displays. Um, seasonal displays are so huge. They're so easy to get customers excited and thinking about the upcoming seasons of things that they might need, whether it may be new boots or new sweaters or uh, fall accessories. They might need scarves or beanies or you know, whatever season it is. I'm just like on winter right now so that's all I'm comparing it to. Seasonal displays are so much fun. They're very inviting. And I think that's what gets people talking the most, honestly, when you're like, oh my gosh, so-and-so, they have that display up. Or like Starbucks say, like on Facebook, you'll be like, oh my gosh, their holiday drinks are back. They have a new mango dragon fruit. Like whatever it is, it gets you talking because it's seasonal and because it only comes around every so often during the year, it gets you excited once you see it up again. So seasonal is big. <laughs> I feel like I'm ending every 
uh, example up with that is like, it's huge, it's big, it's important because it is. They all add up to visual merchandising. There's so many different aspects of it. Next on the list is product displays. This is probably like the easiest one because we all do this or all the merchandise you do. Display your product, display it on a mannequin, uh, pin it to a mannequin. There's so many different ways that you can display product. Now it's kind of, um, insane how creative it's becoming, but I love it. I think it's really cool how people are thinking so much more outside of the box. You can display it on a mannequin. You can kind of like, sometimes people just kind of have it hung or maybe like pin to a wall. There's tons of different ways that you can display things, but product display is huge. All merchandisers, all merchandisers do it. It's basically like the number one like example that you guys have come to know so well. Next on the list is, we're almost done you guys, so fasten your seatbelts. Next on the list is product categories. And this is when you're gonna be displaying a bunch of a similar product in one area. Something recently I could think of a few months ago in September, I went into Trader Joe's and right when you walk in, there is all of the pumpkin treats in one spot. And I'm like, oh my God, I need to see what they have. They have like pumpkin coffee, they have pumpkin pretzels that were so good. They were so good. They have pumpkin Jojo's, all the same category displayed in one spot. So you can be like, what new fall products? Or like, do you have anything pumpkin that's new in? Boom, right there product categories like that because there's certain people that are just like one-stop shop they just want, they're looking for one thing they're not just going to walk around the store so if they're looking for anything pumpkin related you can literally just be like oh these are all our pumpkin products that we have in store right now available last but not least we have cross merchandising cross merchandising is interesting because say you work for a company that has different brands within the company and they don't want you to cross merchandise where you take something from one brand and something from another brand and put them together and they're like no you have to keep them separate which is ludicrous in my opinion every company is different but when you cross merchandise things you're putting things together that you might not normally put together but they're going to draw attention because it's two different unique items let's think of simple cross merchandising say you're at a grocery store super bowl is coming up when you walk in there might be a huge display of say soda beer hot dogs hamburgers pretzels, chips, snacks, all cross merchandising. They're all from different like food groups and different parts of the store, but they're all cross merchandise together because everybody's probably shopping for a Super Bowl party and they all need, they need a one-stop shop to find everything that they need for that party. That is gonna be it for this video, you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new. 14 examples is a lot that I think we covered a lot in this video, so I'm very excited about it. As always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more. Always check the description box below. I include tons of links, especially to my blog. If you wanna look up more content about uh, visual merchandising displays, gift guides for the upcoming holiday season or other things like that, definitely check out the link below and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.